Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's three o'clock here in the UK on uh, Thursday, the 25th of May. Uh, nothing much has happened uh, since I've last spoke a week ago. Markets have uh, uh, gone up a little bit, given it all back uh, in the last couple of days. So uh, the S&P setting at 4141, uh, where it's been, apart from a handful of points uh, for the last uh, what two months now. Uh, so uh, we've got this uh, uh, debt uh, ceiling uh, thing still in the air. Uh, the uh, head of Moody's came out, I think, this morning, say that he felt there won't be a default and they haven't priced that in. Uh, but their definition of a default is interesting. Uh, uh, government employees and government departments not getting paid would not constitute a default. It, a default, in fact, would only be if the capital amounts weren't paid and the next uh, capital, uh, the next uh, date to service the capital amounts is June the 15th. So expect ructions between now and June uh, the 15th uh, until this is put to bed uh, one more time. So uh, let's have a look uh, at the trends on Vector Vest. Well, uh, the confirmed down has been down since I think February, and we're in a down, down situation. Every darn thing is down. Uh, the UK turned up, uh, but I warned everybody on Monday afternoon that experience has shown that when the UK turns up and the American market doesn't, that we have to be extra careful. And that's in fact what happened in the UK yesterday. We got slammed as the American market came back. The, FTSE 100 down 1.5% uh, odd. Uh, so if we have a look at the Vector Vest Composite in the US, if I can find the darn thing, there we are. And there's this tight range. It was already in a range for the last year, okay? Uh, but then it went into this tight little uh, range uh, over the last, since the start of April. And that's what, that's two months now. So we've been in this, uh, you know, really within a handful of points of each other it sat in there the figure on the uh, s p 500 is about 4110 and i've been speaking about that figure to the vector vest regulars in the monday afternoon now for two months they must be sick listening to me uh, as you can see uh, the buy sell ratio is right on its knees at 0.31 getting down there into a mega oversold situation which is at 0.25 but as we all know these indicators can sit mega oversold and mega overbought for one hell of a long time so uh, uh, that's the confirmed down uh, and the confirmed down as I say has been in place uh, since where the 21st of February and that kept us out of all the SW uh, B uh, woes plus all the provincial bank woes and now the debt crisis woes. Uh, I think that uh, there's going to be some rough times even if the debt crisis is in fact sorted out uh, relatively soon but there's been an awful lot of creative accounting done over the last month or two to pay everybody and my back of a cigarette pack uh, calculations tell me that uh, uh, about $600 billion worth of treasuries will have to be written in the second half of the year to replenish the Treasury General account. And that could cause liquidity problems uh, within uh, the stock market. So, so I'm volatile times ahead, folks, where I think that uh, if you are swing trading and you've got a good profit, then you should certainly think about locking in that profit, maybe taking a little bit, certainly getting your stop losses to entry. Uh, so, and that's stuff that we teach in the swing trading course at Vector Vest, uh, and we're just about to have another one, I believe. Uh, so that's well timed. Uh, I, I've still got a position in the QQQs. I couldn't believe what happened this morning, uh, because uh, uh, that's the position in the QQQs. I've been away for a couple of days because at Vector Vest UK we've had a, a two-day trade show uh, out in West London, and I've been there for the last couple of days. It's been very hard work, and uh, uh, I, I had this line in place and uh, my son is watching it and i told him that if we actually went down below that trend line that he should call the position but in fact today uh, it's uh, uh, gapped up and gapped up significantly so right back up in the highs and the qqqs here 
if I draw in a Fibonacci level, that actually doesn't roll off my tongue easily. Uh, uh, and we can see that we're through the 1.618 and it's come back and tested it. And that's a very good sign for further movements here. So uh, uh, I'm going to do my best to keep my wee hands off that for another day or two. I'll, read, uh, I'll have a look at that before the close on Friday night. I wish gold was as good because I, I have a shortened gold that's going great guns. Uh, uh, and uh, th that's the shortened gold. Didn't get into the best levels, I think I told last week. Uh, should have been short from up there, but I was sleeping. Uh, uh, but uh, shorted it there at 2,000, and we're now down at uh, 1949. So that's, that's $50 uh, move in gold. Uh, uh, my GDX position came back, and I got stopped out of that at entry. I, I, if you remember, I was hoping... Uh, to hold on to that position uh, because I've still got a great deal of faith in the gold market. Uh, I, I view this pullback, and I've been speaking about this for a while, as a three to five week pullback before the big trend starts to go again in gold. Uh, but uh, I, I couldn't uh, afford to uh, let that GDX uh, long position turn into a loser. So I, I got out of that at entry. And this one's going quite uh, well. I haven't taken any money yet. Uh, those of you that know my work, if you actually expand this to a gnarly chart, you'll see a great, great example of a uh, Wyckoff up thrust yesterday afternoon, just as the US market opened. I think this move down is starting to look a little bit uh, uh, long in the tooth, as you can see there's actually five waves in it. So we're at the end of this fifth wave, and that I think will be a wave A down. So uh, uh, again, I'll have a look at that uh, before the close uh, on Friday night. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, folks, uh, in terms of other positions in the American market, I haven't done anything at all. Uh, the uh, color guard is somewhat bearish. Vectorvest does not advocate buying stocks at this time. It says exactly the same in the UK. Uh, I have a, quite a few positions in the UK that need to be uh, tenderly managed, and I shall certainly talk about that at our Vectorvest UK meeting next Tuesday after the long weekend. Uh, my advice uh, is uh, to do your best to try and sit on your hands uh, until we have this debt crisis uh, resolved. Uh, I know that is uh, conservative advice and maybe I'm getting uh, long in the tooth uh, and more conservative by the day, uh, but I think that we're going to be into a very, very volatile uh, environment until this is sorted out. And I think that uh, if you are a, got experience as a short-term trader looking at intraday charts, then I think you can probably make some money. I think it's going to be very, very difficult to lock in those profits in the volatility. So just be very careful out there. Uh, it's a long weekend on both sides of the Atlantic, both here and uh, both in the UK and in the US. So have a, a great uh, long weekend and I'll speak to you next week. Bye-bye.